Welcome to my new calculus channel. I am John Gabriel. And this is lesson three in which we will be discussing exactly what is a tangent line. So, if you already know calculus, <coughs> mainstream calculus that is, you'll be under the impression that tangent lines can cross particular curves at certain points. Well, that notion is entirely false and it's just too bad that it's propagated in mainstream calculus because the original definition of tangent line is a finite line segment that intersects another curved line in one point only and crosses it nowhere. The slope of this tangent line expressed in terms of variables is called the general derivative and we will discuss this in subsequent lessons but to give you an idea of what is a general derivative well if you just look over here in this case here the general derivative of this red line here is x cubed yes that me uh, I'm sorry is 3x squared that's the general derivative g of x is 3x squared because <coughs> it's simply an expression for the derivative or the slope of the tangent line anywhere there is a tangent line across this curve. If we say g dash of x1, then that's going to equal to 3 times 1 squared, which is equal to 3. And so that would be the numeric derivative. <coughs> we'll discuss this in more detail later, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what is the general derivative okay and the numeric derivative numeric okay in other words the derivative at a particular point <coughs> the general derivative may not even exist at certain points it's just an expression which is given to tell us what the slope of the tangent line is at any of these points here so The derivative is a special kind of slope because it pertains to a tangent line. As we saw in lesson two, where we discussed no change in x and y, really, the derivative does not apply to a line that is not a tangent line. Webster Dictionary has this definition. A tangent line is one that can be described by meeting a curve or surface in a single point if a sufficiently small interval is considered. And the first known use is 1582. This was the understanding that both Newton and Leib Leibniz had. Given these facts, it's not possible for any straight line to be tangent to any other straight line. And here comes a blockbuster revelation. If Newton's understanding were incorrect, even his famous root approximation method would fail to work. So let's look at the, <coughs> the following applet and see what happens. So here we have tangent lines and as we move it across like that we'll see, oops, it's not a tangent line there. Even though in mainstream calculus this is considered to be a tangent line. Well that's, that's false because a tangent line never crosses a curve. Okay. Uh, yeah, there are half tangents on either side of this point, but there is no tangent line, no complete tangent line. Similarly, if we do that, you'll see that there's no tangent line there either. But the reason for that is, in, in mainstream calculus, is that the ratio is not defined. Otherwise, there would be, because they don't really care that a tangent line crosses a curve. So that would be incorrect, okay? No tangent line there. There is no vertical tangent. And there is no derivative. <coughs> and although we can find the numeric value of a derivative at that point there, it really doesn't describe a full tangent line, only the slope of the half tangent lines, okay? In the new calculus, this point here is also called the point of inflection, the origin on the cubic. And no derivative is possible at a point of inflection. The definition does not allow that. 
and for good reason. It makes sense. Um, there are several considerations here, which if you already know calculus, uh, you'd be able to understand better. One of them is the mean value theorem and the general definition of the derivative. So what is the definition of a tangent? Let's quickly see. We read through, through it in the, in the previous screen, but really it's meeting a curve or a surface in a single point if a sufficiently small interval is considered. Okay, So <coughs> if you look at that there, it's the small interval here that we're considering. Some, some mainstream academic might say, yeah, well, we can stretch this red line in this direction. It will cut the curve here, too. Well, in that case, you're no, lo you're no longer talking about a tangent line, but a line that intersects this blue curve in two points. It only happens to be tangent at this point, but not at this point. So a tangent line is a finite line. In fact, an infinite line is really a bad concept. There is no such thing as an infinite line because by definition of a straight line, it happens to be the geometric object described by two endpoints. Now think about it. An infinite line has no endpoints. And if you study the elements, <coughs> you will find that definition in the very f first book of, of Euclid. That is, a line is that path, that shortest path between two endpoints. Okay, so <coughs> just going back to something I mentioned earlier about Newton's root approximation method. Uh, if Newton had interpreted the tangent in any other way, there would be several big problems. For example, let's say that he was moving along here, boom, like that. So that this tangent line would then intersect this curve here and also the axis here. <coughs> so you'd have to choose that point and then move along here and then choose that point and then finally get to this point here which is undefined. But Newton understood that a tangent line, any tangent line like this, is used in the root approximation method by <coughs> taking that point and constructing a new tangent line there, right? and so on until we find the root at zero. If Newton understood it in any other way, the root approximation method would not work. Okay, so we've seen what the definition of a tangent line is. The mainstream definition of a tangent line is obviously false because it includes the limit concept and I discussed the limit concept uh, a little earlier. Um, but I'll discuss it again as we get to the next lessons. There is a, a special lesson that I've uploaded called Cauchy's Kluge, and therein I talk about my discussion with Anders Kaysorg of MIT, where I demonstrate that his definition of the derivative is not only circular, but it's flawed in several respects. So it's imperative to have a clear understanding of what is a tangent line. Let's recap on that. It meets a curve or a surface in a single point if a sufficiently small interval is considered. In other words, it can only intersect in one point, extend to both sides of that point, in other words, a finite line segment, and crosses the curve nowhere. That is what is a tangent line. Moreover, if this definition were wrong, all the works of the ancient Greeks would be wrong too. The ancient Greeks used tangents extensively, not only to circles, not only to parabolas, not only to conics, but also to quite exquisite geometric objects, such as spirals. Archimedes has several tangent theorems regarding spirals. In fact, he even managed to square the circle using a spiral, obviously not with a compass and a straight edge, but it's still a method of squaring the circle. And that can be found in his work called On Spirals in the, work of, in the works of Archimedes. Now, in the next section, we'll take a quick look at what is a secant line and how we find its slope. So, this is all for this lesson. 
Um, I'm John Gabriel. This is the New Calculus Channel. Thanks for joining me. Join me in the next lesson. Thank you very much.